Hello everyone, this is Malik from Railfan89 here. In today's video, this will be considered a special. And the reason that I say that this is going to be a special video is because this is the first video where I review a computer that I built from scratch. Um, so this is actually one of my hobbies. Um, I've built many computer systems before, but this in fact is the first time that I review a computer system. Uh, so this is the successor to the first computer that I built roughly 10 years ago. And uh, I just wanted to point out, uh, some of you may be wondering uh, why I haven't been uploading videos. And the main reason why I haven't been uploading is because my first computer that I built uh, 10 years ago roughly, uh, towards the end of its run, it started uh, failing on me. I actually... Uh, lost the data on one of my drives, uh, more than likely due to a power surge, um, unfortunately. And it towards the end of its run, it started showing signs of failure. I would say with the motherboard, uh, because I started receiving shorts from uh, the USB ports. And, um, you know, with the shorts, that causes uh, blue screens as well. Uh, so there were a slew of issues that I experienced, and I've attempted to troubleshoot uh, to no avail. You know, I've viewed the event logs, um, I've cleaned out the system, uh, I've, you know, tried to make sure that there's adequate airflow, uh, minimal to no dust. Uh, but, you know, uh, with that being said, uh, as I tried as much troubleshooting, but it was... Uh, not a good idea to continue using that first computer because of all the issues. Um, so without further ado, I hope you all enjoy this uh, review of my newly built computer that I finished. Uh, I f actually finished uh, earlier this month. Uh, I started roughly around towards the end of November, but there were some delays, unfortunately, uh, due to shipping of some of the components. Um, I've actually been using my new computer roughly for about almost a month now. I wanted to make this review a month in, uh, be just to get an idea of how the computer handles. And overall, I'd say it's really good, but I wanted to give it some time. Uh, so now that I've been using my computer, I felt that it's a good idea to make a review. Uh, so without further ado, I hope you all enjoy this video. Uh, please feel free to offer any suggestions on how I may be able to improve on the videos, uh, possible ideas for the new computer, um, ideas as well for the channel. And I hope you all enjoy. Please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And uh, let's take a walk over to the new computer. Alright everyone, so here we go. This is my Command Station Gaming PC. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys the outside of the case first and the features that it offers. Uh, after I show you guys the outside of the case, uh, we'll take a look at the inside of the case showing its components. And then I'll power on the system and I'll show you all the uh, BIOS. Uh, so without further ado, here we are. All right, everyone, so here we go. Uh, this is the front of the computer. Uh, so this is the Corsair 4000D airflow case. Um, one of the reasons that this is called the airflow case is because there's many options for efficient airflow. As you could see at the front of the case, we do have quite a few. So from where you see towards the sides, of the case. We do have vents that allow for air to go into the system. And we have these triangular patterns on the front panel, which could actually be taken off. Uh, these front, these um, triangles allow for air to also enter the system as well. So I'm going to show you now uh, this panel can be taken off to a simple uh, disconnect. I'm going to lay that to the side and you could see we have our Corsair branding all throughout the case and um, down here as well we see the Corsair 4000D. Uh, so here we have a dust filter 
Uh, this dust filter prevents dust from entering the system. Um, so dust, if there were to be any dust, I cleaned the computer. There wasn't a lot of dust, but uh, let's say if there, were, if this computer was in a dusty environment, uh, dust would be going to the filter, preventing. Uh, so the purpose of this filter is to prevent dust from entering the system, basically. So I'm going to show you if you needed to clean this filter, this could simply be taken off. So you see how I just did this can now just remove it. And I'm going to neatly lay these two items to the side. And here is where the fans are. So these are the Corsair SP120 RGB fans. These fans are responsible for cooling the front of the system. Uh, so these are 120 millimeter fans. Um, one of the one of the things that are actually quite unique about these are that these are actually indeed smart fans, and I'll elaborate more on that. Um, one of the reasons that this these fans are smart is that there's a software that accompanies these fans called the Corsair IQ. And what basically what that is, is it's a software that allows a Corsair suite of components to be in sync with each other. So I have in my system Corsair fans uh, exclusively, so that way I could control the RGB settings as well as the cooling profiles with this program. Um, I'll show you a bit about the Corsair IQ in a bit when we power on the system. Uh, you could see here that we have mounting points for the fans. So at the front of the Corsair 4000D airflow, uh, you do have options to input uh, three 120 millimeter fans or two 140 millimeter fans for airflow if you wanted to. You do need to put the accessories back onto the front of the system case. So now I'm gonna go over here uh, to the items that I neatly laid down, and I'm first gonna put the dust filter on. So remember, like I showed you before, you just use this tab here, and you heard that click. That lets me know that the dust filter is nice and secure. And now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put the, uh, the um, vents on. So I'm gonna push it into place. It easily just snaps in. So we're about to hear that in a few moments. Uh, please bear with me because I'm actually using uh, one hand to record. So the front uh, vent uh, snapped into place and that is the front of the case. Uh, so now we can uh, actually go to the other side of the case. Right, so let's go over the top of the system case. So right off the bat, you can tell that I do have some case stickers. Uh, I actually put these on at the end when I completed the system build. Uh, so this lets you know that I have an Intel Core i7 processor in here and that I have G-Skill memory. Uh, let's take a look at the buttons. So this button is the power button, so you could use this to power the system on and off. Um, I wouldn't recommend uh, doing a hard reboot or a shutdown. Uh, if you can, when using the computer, uh, you can shut it down through the GUI or the system interface. Uh, we do have one USB type A. This is a USB 3.0 connection. Uh, USB C, uh, that's 3.1. We do have a line in connection. So if you're using a headset or a microphone, you can input that into that connection. And lastly, we have a reset button. So in the instance where you really needed to reset the system, let's say you're not in Windows or in Linux, you can use this button to uh, reset the system. Uh, here we have a magnetic air dust filter by Corsair. So here you do see the Corsair branding here. Uh, similarly to the front of the case, uh, the top of the case features one as well, and it could simply just be taken off like that. And the purpose of that filter is to prevent dust from entering the system. 
So I'm gonna neatly lay that to the side. And at the top of the case, we have room for two 140 millimeter fans, or if you want, you can input a radiator. Uh, so as you can see, for cooling, I'm using two Corsair SP140 fans. Uh, these are also smart fans, just like the Corsair SP120s that I have at the front of the case. Uh, so this also is responsible for cooling the inside of my system case. Uh, as you can see, here are the mounting points. So you can see each of these screws. And you also have options for a radiator if you wanted to use uh, liquid cooling. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put on the air dust filter. Uh, please bear with me because I'm using one hand to record as well as another to uh, deal with these case components. So that's neat. Uh, so now let's take a look at the sides of the case. All right, everyone. So here is the side of the case. Um, so for the side panel, we do have a tempered glass panel. Uh, as you could see at the left end of the panel, there are two yellow screws and that could be used to take off the side panel. For that part of the case, you want to be very careful. And sorry, please bear with me because I'm using, like I said, one hand to record. Uh, here we have the other side panel and this panel behind this is where all the cabling is So in a few moments, I'm gonna take off each of the panels and I'm gonna showcase uh, What's behind each of these sides? All right, so here we have the main action. Uh, so this is the inside of the system case uh, So this is what was behind the tempered glass panel and let's take a look at what is here to offer. So as you can see, here's the motherboard and we have various components on the motherboard. I'm gonna point out what each of those components are. Um, mainly here, I have my graphics card. This is the Gigabyte RTX uh, 3070. Uh, this is the eight gigabyte variant uh, overclock edition. As you can see, here are my PSU cables that connect to the graphics card. On the motherboard, I'm using the Gigabyte Z Z690 uh, UDX4 uh, motherboard. It's a Wi-Fi motherboard, and let's take a look to see what else we have. Uh, this is one of the fans that came with the case. It's not RGB, but I chose to replace the front factory fan and place it on the back because I have my computer facing me at my workstation and I didn't want RGB uh, towards the wall. So this is the factory fan. Here's the Cooler Master MA612 Stealth. Uh, so this is a air cooler, a powerful air cooler I must say because right under this air cooler is cooling the Intel Core i7-12700K processor. So that processor is clocked at 3.6 gigahertz. Uh, it does, it's one of Intel's first processors. It's actually a high, well not first processor, but what I meant by that is it's the first processor of Intel's to feature a hybrid architecture. So it features uh, performance cores and efficiency cores. So to efficiently allocate uh, certain cores to handle certain tasks. Uh, here I have my memory for the system. So this is G-Skill RAM. I have uh, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM in the system, a uh, cast latency of 16, and a clock speed of 3600 megahertz. Uh, I just wanted to point out when choosing system RAM, uh, the lower the cast latency, uh, the better uh, to minimize delays. Um, so what my goal for choosing this RAM, I wanted RAM that had a high clock speed, but a low latency. Uh, so I would consider uh, 16 to be pretty 
uh, low for DDR4. Uh, mainly you see DDR4 RAM ranging between cast latencies, I want to say of 15 through 19. Uh, so this is towards the lower end uh, for RAM. Uh, here you can get a better look of those uh, Corsair SP140 uh, fans that I had that I showed when I featured the top of the system case. Uh, let's see, what else? Oh, here we go. Uh, we have for the main uh, storage, I have two NVMe drives. These are really fast NVMe drives. You can't really see down here. Um, but it's very, okay, here is we're focused. Um, behind this uh, heat sink uh, that you see down there, that screwed into the motherboard is another uh, NVMe drive. These are Western Digital uh, SN750X. Uh, no, SN850X uh, NVMEs. Uh, these are using, these are connected to the M.2 slots on the motherboard, so they don't require any power from the SATA connectors. Um, NVMe is basically a faster uh, alternative to solid state drives uh, using the M.2 standard. And these are actually really good, I gotta say. Um, with this, my system loads literally in less than 10 seconds from uh, boot to getting to the desktop screen. Um, let's see, what else do we have? So I showed you guys the MVMEs, uh, the graphics card. This is actually, this graphics card, if we can get a better uh, look here, as you could see, it's using three, three fans are powering are keeping cool this uh, graphics card. It's uh, taking up a lot of space in the case, but for what it's worth, I gotta say, uh, this RTX 3070 graphics card is a really good uh, GPU. Um, and let's see, what else do we have? Uh, you can see over here uh, for the Corsair 4000D Airflow, we do have our connections for the uh, I front I.O. panel. And those connections are actually connected uh, right here towards the bottom right-hand corner of the case. It's very small. Uh, you can see right here is the uh, CMOS battery and the front panel connections are right here. You can't really see them, but they power things such as the power LED, the hard drive LED, um, the reset switch, um, and we do have our uh, USB connections on the motherboard as well. And uh, for the inside of the case, I'm gonna quickly turn the case around. Uh, let me actually see if I could stand it up because I do wanna show you guys a few more features inside the case. So here we have the case standing up. Uh, so yeah, you got a better angle of uh, my uh, my Gigabyte uh, LGA1700 UD AX uh, Wi-Fi motherboard. Uh, here, we it's interesting because we have a shroud that houses the uh, PSU, so you can see the power supply right under under there. Um, it helped. The purpose of this housing is so that it stores the power supply and any components or cabling under, and it helps to keep the case having a nice, uh, efficient uh, aesthetic to it. So you see, um, it it's overall pretty neat. I did try to manage the cable, and I'll explain, I'll explain that uh, later on in the video when I show you the other side of the system case. But you can see uh, from here, maybe you could get a good view. Uh, there's different uh, vents throughout the system, or better yet, uh, cable management points where you can route cables through the system. Uh, so you can see there's some airflow as we do have the meshified design. And we also have the one of the PSU shrouds here. So this can actually be taken off, but I'm gonna not do that right now. I'm just gonna keep it there. And uh, let's actually, Oh, one other thing I forgot. Uh, for the Corsair 4000D Airflow, you do see that there are these two connection points here, or these two 
um, these two, um, what do we call these again? Uh, these two plates for the GPU. So one of the options that Corsair offers for this case, it's optional. Um, I didn't purchase this add-on um, because I feel that having the GPU mounted the way I have it provides more airflow versus a vertical stand for the GPU. But if you wanted to, for aesthetics, you could uh, you could mount the GPU vertically. So the GPU would be standing. So if I did have the add-on card, I'd have the RTX 3070 standing and you'd get a better view of the three fans. Um, yeah, but overall, yeah, that's just what I wanted to mention. Uh, so yeah, this is the inside of the system case. And uh, let's take a look at the backside. All right, so this is probably one of the messiest parts of this video. Um, I am hoping this part is not too messy. I tried to do the best that I can when it came to cable management, but basically the back side of the case allows you to manage your cables. So we do have Corsair's uh, rapid route management system. So you can see this channel of cables going down uh, this pathway. And we have the Velcro straps where I scrap down all of the cables or as much cables as I can. Um, as you can see throughout this uh, bundle of cable, uh, there's, different area, there's different routes that I took uh, to manage each type of cable. So you could see I have a series of cables. These are for the, the um, top and front case fans. And I have them going to this uh, fan controller. So what I forgot to mention earlier, because I have quite a number of fans, my motherboard doesn't have enough uh, pins to handle all of these case fans. Now I could have used a fan splitter but that's a bit risky because you definitely need to know how much amperage each header uh, utilizes. Roughly, typically for a, a fan, a fan um, case fan header, it maxes out at one amp. Uh, I would say the typical case fan uses 0.3 amps. So in theory, if I wanted to connect uh, three fans, I could have used a splitter uh, that splits the fan connection. But that's also risky too, because your power supply needs to pro provide the proper amount of power, uh, depending on how much your system's utilizing. And let's say if you went over the amperage limit, you could burn out the fan header. So I didn't want to take that risk. So long story short, this uh, fan controller is powering all of my case fans through one, um, it's powering it through a USB header on the motherboard. Um, so let's elaborate what this fan controller does. So like I said, it powers each of the case fans. Uh, this is a Corsair Commander Core XT. And one of the reasons that I chose this as opposed to utilizing the default uh, Corsair RGB nodes is because this allows me to connect all my fans here, whereas the RGB node didn't. Uh, so you could see here, uh, what it shows here is my connections for the case fan. So there's a total of six. I have five in my system. So I connect all of my case fans in a sequence from one through five. So starting at the bottom of the case, um, I work my way up, uh, go towards the end, and I have my one through five connection. And the same applies to the RGB. So the case fans that I use do have RGB uh, headers and they are connected to this Commander Core XT to provide the RGB functionality. Uh, there is the TPM uh, section here and this allows us to monitor the temperatures of each of the fans and I'll show you guys more of that when I launch the Commander Core, I'm sorry, the Corsair IQ. I, per I purchased an add-on accessory for the case so this is connected magnetically through this back plate here um, from Corsair. I actually spray painted it, believe it or not, because the black uh, the the black 
backplate was not available and I didn't know when it would be available. I looked online but it was only in white but since this is a black case I wanted to take my hand at uh, spray painting it in a uh, matte or flat finish. Uh, here we have um, we have uh, provisions for solid state drives and it's interesting because all you need to do if you wanted to take this mount off is unscrew it. I'm not going to do it now because everything is connected to the system and this took quite a bit of work to, ma to manage all of this cable. Uh, so you can tell some of this cable is tight and it's all zip tied. So I have a certain method to how I zip tied all of these cables. So like you can see here, I've zip tied the cable for my, um, for my solid state drives. These are the SATA connections. And this is the um, this is the power for the uh, SATA drives that connect to the uh, power supply. Down here, I do have a 1,000 watt uh, power supply. I've used this in the previous system. Now, some of you may be wondering why I reused it in the new system was because this is a 80 plus gold uh, power supply. So with EVGA, they provided a 10 year warranty. Right now, this is on year, it's approaching year number seven, um, but I've taken good care of this power supply. So I'd say around when I do the upgrade for this computer a few years from now, I may look into rewiring uh, the whole system with a new power supply. Uh, now you can't really see back here as there's a bundle of uh, power supply cables. Now it was, I gotta admit, because this is somewhat of a compact ATX mid tower case and because I do have this 1000 watt power supply here, I needed extra storage for video recordings. Now I could have used the top of the PSU shroud to uh, to store these solid state drives, but I put them back here for a cleaner look. So you can tell that there's two additional solid state drives here, and I use those dynamically uh, merged for video recordings. So all in all, I have uh, six storage drives. So two uh, solid state drives. These are SPA55s, uh, two terabytes each. Um, I have Two, I have a total of 512 gigabytes. So each of these solid state drives are, um, are 240, but they're dynamically uh, merged. And on the motherboard, I do have uh, two separate one terabyte uh, Western Digital SN850Xs operating at 7300 megahertz. So pretty fast uh, memory. Uh, so all in all, I just wanted to give you guys a brief run through of the back or no, the yeah, the back of the case where all the cables are managed. Uh, so now let's take a look at another side of the case. All right, so here we go. Uh, this is also another the other side of the case. Uh, so what I previously showed you was the back side panel, but now this is the back of the case. And what I want to show you here are the IO shield, the connections for the graphics card and these plates, as well as the power supply. So here we have the IO shield. So this connects to the back of the motherboard. Uh, so this, like I said, was a Wi-Fi motherboard. So you see there are these coax looking connections and I use that to connect the uh, Wi-Fi adapter. I do have, uh, if you're going old school, we have a PS2 connection. So if you're using an old uh, PS2 motherboard, I'm sorry, an old PS2 keyboard or mouse, you'd use that green or purple connection. Uh, we have USB 2.0. We have USB 3.2. These are all Type A. Um, now there. Now you see on the I/O shield, we do have for. I'm sorry for the I/O connections on the motherboard, a uh, Display Port and an HDMI port. Now you may be wondering why that is. If I have a graphics card here, the reason for that is 
because the Core i7-12700K uh, features an iGPU, so it's the Intel UHD 770. Uh, I purchased that processor. The reason I did is because, let's say in the instance where my GPU fails, I can resort to using the iGPU in the interim until I get a replacement GPU. There was another variant of this processor, the Core i7-12700KF, uh, which removed the um, iGPU, but I wanted to get the iGPU uh, just to be on the safe side. Um, so let's take a look here. We do have USB Type-C uh, as well as uh, USB 3.2. And I have my uh, 2.5 gig uh, ethernet connection and we have our mic, line out, and line in connections. And on the back of the RTX 3070, we have a display port connection. And no, two display port connections, as well as two HDMI connections. Uh, these are the uh, these are the back plates. And this is the back of my power supply. So you can see right now it's off and it has an eco mode. Uh, at the bottom, we do have a filter and I'm gonna show you what that is. So this prevents dust from entering the bottom of the system. So if we have any dust, which we have a little bit, this prevents it from entering the power supply. So I'm gonna put that back. And without further ado, uh, that does it for the uh, run through of the computer system. So now that I've showed you guys what the Corsair 4000D Airflow has to offer as well as these components, I do wanna show you guys a run through of the system while it's powered on. And we will show that in a few moments. All right, everyone, so here we have it. This is my system in action, it's powered on. Uh, you can see my keyboard, my mouse, my gaming controller and headset, and I do have a uh, speaker in the back that also has RGB. Uh, this is the Logitech G213 uh, keyboard. You can see the RGB colors, as well as the G203 mouse. And right now, the three Corsair SP120 fans, these are the front fans that you see here. It's just a solid color. Um, they'll change in, once I launch the Corsair IQ, which I'll show in a bit. I have an Xbox One controller that I use for gaming. My uh, HyperX uh, Stinger headset, as well as my speaker system back here. So you can see the changing RGB color. And this is all on a gaming monitor. So this is a 27 inch asus vg 278qr monitor uh, it's a 1080p uh, but one of the things that i like about this monitor it gives you a number of options to fine tune the settings uh, so you can get the correct colors sharpness as well as set it in which mode that you want um, i do like the convenience of this monitor as it has options for cable management um, it does have internal audio as well as a USB connection, HDMI display port, as well as your power. Um, and one of the things that is interesting about this gaming monitor is it offers a wide visibility. It's a 27 inch screen um, and it is a gaming monitor, like I said earlier. Uh, so you can see here, it is a NVIDIA G-Sync. It also has a free sync uh, functionality for AMD GPUs, but you can see the badge here. NVIDIA G-Sync and it is 165 Hertz so it allows for smooth movements and uh, frames per second games um, also with this monitor it has a very low latency so that's the key and that's why I chose this monitor um, because it gives me smooth of smooth uh, performance with gameplay uh, when I'm playing uh, video games and it's a very low latency, so there is very minimal delay with this monitor. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, so you could see here with the system powered on through the tempered glass, the top case fans, and as well as 
the inside of the system. Uh, you can't really see too well because of the reflection, but you can see the Gigabyte logo for my graphics card. And here we have the system BIOS. Uh, so this gives you an overall, right now it's in easy mode, so it gives you an overall uh, summary of what's going on. Uh, so let's take a look. So my motherboard, this is the uh, Gigabyte mother motherboard that I chose. It's the ultra durable uh, Z690 series. Um, and you can see the Gigabyte, this is the UFI BIOS. Um, so it gives us some basic info about the system. So right now it shows me the BIOS, the motherboard, the memory and installed uh, component tree. Um, shows me my speed as well as the XMP profile. So this is the custom profile here where the RAM is overclocked and it shows you the latency readings. So you see the cast latency timings here. Here we have a section that shows the memory specs. Well, no, the storage specs. So for the SATA drives, I have two uh, solid state drives that are uh, two terabytes each, as well as another two that are 240 gigs each, as well as my M2 drives. Let's see. Yep, so my NVMe drives show here. Right now, I only have one PCIe device plugged in, which is the graphics card, so that's PCIe 4.0. Uh, the motherboard that I'm using where I have my GPU connected is a PSC, PSIe 5.0 slot, but right now uh, there are no PCIe 5.0 graphics cards, so I'm running at the highest possible uh, speeds that this card was designed for, which is PCIe 4.0. Uh, here we have the boot sequence, so it's booting from the NVMe drive, and I do have a smart fan system, so it gives me the RPMs that the fans are running at. So right now the system fans, so system fan 1 is basically all of these uh, Corsair fans that I have connected to, because remember uh, what I mentioned earlier, my course, I, my um, Commander Core XT is connected to one pinout. Um, and the CPU fan are the two fans that are connected to the um, CPU cooler, which is the um, Cooler Master uh, MA612 Stealth. So there's two fans on there that are operating on one frequency, and the System Fan 1 are my five uh, Corsair. Uh, smart fans. Up here we see here the speed that the CPU can operate at. So right now it's at 3.6 gigahertz but it looks like it's capable of reaching or boosting up to 4.7 gigahertz. Uh, right now my temperatures are very low which is really good. Um, Right now my CPU is operating at 32 degrees Celsius. There's not much load going on right now uh, because we're in the BIOS, um, but we should see like, let's say if we open up a program or something, uh, or a demanding program like a game, uh, these temperatures will definitely change. Uh, we have the frequency that the RAM is operating at and its temperatures, uh, voltage readings, and uh, overall, that does it with the easy mode of this BIOS. Uh, there is a more technical mode, but I, you know, just for the purposes of this video, just wanted to give a quick summary as to what this information shows. You can see today's date as well as the time. And now we're going to do a test of the system boot up to see how quick the system boots. Alright, so the system is off and we are going to do a quick boot up to see how fast it loads. All right, so as you can tell, uh, that was a very fast boot. Um, now, 
that the system has booted, we're going to log in and I'm going to show you guys the IQ program for Corsair. All right, so we're in. As you can see, these are some of the games and programs I currently have installed. Uh, here we have Windows 11. And let's take a look at the Corsair uh, IQ program. So this program allows for monitoring of the sensors coming from uh, these Corsair components as well as uh, for the components inside the system. So you could see right now the Corsair IQ program gives me temperature readings and basically what's going on with the processor as well as the motherboard and the GPU. This shows you a picture of what's powering these fans. So here we have the Commander Core XT. And we can choose different effects for these fans. So like right now, I my main default is Corsair 1 Blue. And with that selected, we see that the fans are now blue. Let's say if I change this to, let's see, I'm gonna zoom out. If I change this to another effect, yellow. Fans change over to yellow. If I change to abstract, we get different effects here. Let's see, this is interstellar. We have more patterns. Uh, the liquid. See, we have different pulsating patterns with the colors and rainbow. So this is actually my favorite, I would say, because we have uh, varying colors here um, for the RGB. And um, yeah, so overall, uh, that's basically what the command, what the Corsair IQ does. If I had, let's say, a Corsair keyboard and mouse as well, uh, I'd also get these same effects. But I do like this program because it gives you an overall uh, reading of what's going on with the components in the system. Let's see the dashboard. Anything for the dashboard? Right now, nothing for the dashboard. But it does show me uh, a reading for the uh, RGB ports. Before, I used to have something here which gave you a better breakdown, but for some reason that's not showing. But yeah, overall, uh, that gives you a basic summary of what's going on in Commander and the Corsair uh, IQ. Um, yeah, so that does it. Lastly, I do want to show you guys this uh, UPS battery that I have here connected to my computer. Uh, this is basically a big battery, uh, operates like a laptop battery. So right now that I have my computer connected to this, let's say in the instance where I have a power outage, uh, this battery will allow my computer to, use, to run in auxiliary mode. Uh, so it'll give me enough time to safely shut down the system. Uh, with my prior computer, I just used the surge protector, but the perks of this battery is once I have a power outage and all power is lost while this battery is charged, I'll have roughly around 50 minutes of runtime to make sure that all of my work is saved so I can power down the system. Uh, let's show you guys what this button does. So right now on the screen, on the screen readout, um, it shows me that the UPS is online, uh, that the system is use, using very little load from the UPS. And right now, uh, you know, because in the US with the wall outlets, you got 120 volts. So estimating roughly uh, the input voltage is 123 volts. Um, let me see, what else do we have here? Event. Right now, my runtime estimating is 70 minutes, uh, so that is good. So in the event of an outage, I'd have roughly 70 minutes to ensure that my system can safely power down and that I save all of my work. Uh, so that does it with the backup UPS system. 
Oh, and uh, here's the uh, wattage load right now. Very little because right now this uh, UPS maxes out at around 900 watts, but it looks like I'm only roughly using a 90 watts load. Uh, so it's very good. Uh, so that does it for the UPS. All right, everyone. So that wraps it up for this video. I hope you all enjoyed my first review of the gaming computer. Uh, please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I hope you all enjoy and stay tuned for more soon. Have a great day, everyone. Bye.